The science behind clear beverages and clear colas like Crystal Pepsi, Tab Clear, or even just clear flavored waters is quite simple and it's something you can do at home. It just deals with making a micro emulsion. And we can do that simply with four ingredients and two pieces of equipment. All you need is a balanced way to some things out and a stir plate. Now, you can use heat, and I'll be using heat today, it just kind of speeds things up, but you do not need heat for this emulsion to form. The four ingredients are really simple, distilled water, an emulsifier, I'm using polysorbate 80 today just because it's easy to get. Uh, you'll need some propylene glycol and a flavor. So you can use lemon oil or essential oils, or you can use a cola formulation if you're trying to make that crystal Pepsi clone. You can use one of the ones that I've done in the last couple of videos, or you can make your own. Or you can do the holy grail of non-alcoholic beverages, which is to make a non-alcoholic gin using juniper and a few other flavors. I haven't worked on that yet, but it should work with this process. So you can take all this, your experimentation and this information and commercialize it. Because that's exactly what Pepsi did back in 1989 when they were granted this patent on microemulsions, which talks a little bit about making clear colas. And two years after this patent was granted, Crystal Pepsi came out. Pepsi, this patent has a lot of information in it doing this, but it's not complex and anybody can do it. So I'm just gonna do a demo for you. We're gonna use lemon oil today, but there will be other parts of this video where we get into making a Crystal Pepsi clone. But understanding the science is so important before you get into the more complex nature. It's not that much more complex, but understanding the basics will get give you a good head start on knowing what to work with. So let me show you how to do this because it's really simple. And what you're gonna end up with is a clear product. These are two lemon ones that I've made. Now, typically when you mix lemon oil with water, even with a little bit of emulsifier, you're gonna get something cloudy like this and it will separate over time. So the trick is to put these in a very specific order. The first thing we're gonna do is mix some water with our emulsifier. Now the patent does call for polysorbate 60, but I mentioned we're using polysorbate 80. This one's just harder to get, whereas polysorbate 80 is widely available. Uh, everybody should be able to get it. It's food approved, and we're not using very much in the final beverage, only you know 30 to 100 parts per million. And it works very effectively with lemon oil and a lot of other oils. And then what we're going to do is once we get the water and the polysorbate mix, we're gonna mix it with our essential oil, so our flavor. And then we're going to add propylene glycol. And as we stir it, it'll be cloudy. But as we add more propylene glycol, it will hit a point where it becomes clear. That is when a spontaneous microemulsion forms. And the droplet size is in that magical one micron range and you don't need any mechanical, you don't need a homogenizer or any other method to do this, it does it chemically. So let me show you how to do it because it is surprisingly simple. So I'm just gonna move some stuff here. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna weigh out some polysorbate 80 and we're gonna need four grams of this. Now there are other emulsifiers you can use, so sucrose esters is one that I'll experiment with in the future. But for the most part, you need an emulsifier in the HLB range, which just means hydrophilic lipophilic balance. It's just a scale from one to 20. We need something in the 15 range to emulsify essential oils in water. So this is an oil in water emulsion. And at that, level, there's only a few emulsifiers that can be used in food at that HLB level of 15. You now you use 14 or 13, but each emulsifier is gonna have some pluses and minuses. And though this method is really simple, I will tell you right now that you go to university, get your doctorate, write your thesis on emulsifiers and still only know a fraction about emulsification and colloids. It is a big industry, but we start here and then you'll understand it and then we'll grow and I'll do more videos on this and eventually we'll get to the point where we're making a Crystal Pepsi clone or a non-alcoholic gin emulsion that is clear in the final beverage. Now what we're gonna do is put a magnetic stir in here and we're gonna get this 
warmed up a little bit. Again, you don't need heat, but it does help. And I'm gonna heat it up to about 45, 50 degrees. So the next step is we're gonna weigh out 7.2 grams of distilled water. I do recommend distilled water for emulsions. The pH is neutral on this and emulsions can be affected by pHs. So typically you want your pH above three for a stable emulsion once you get it into a beverage. Uh, that is one of the limitations of emulsions, but for something like a non-alcoholic gin and tonic, that's perfectly acceptable. And even citrus beverages, so this lemon is fine with a pH of three. It's usually what Sprite and 7-Up, they have about a pH of 3.3 to 3.2. So 7.22 grams of distilled water. Now I usually just put this on the hot plate to warm it up as well because as we mix things, we don't want to cold shock things. So put cold water into the, or cold oils or anything into a warm emulsion. Think of it as making mayonnaise or, you know, making ice cream where you, you want to create an emulsion, but you don't want to break it by adding too much of one ingredient or something's cold. So this is the way to do it. Just keep everything at the same temperature. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to weigh out two grams of our essential oil. So I'm just using lemon oil. Each oil is going to be slightly different in the amount of emulsifier you need. I'll put a lot of that over on Patreon. The patent that I listed at the beginning goes through, I think, 20 some odd items that you can emulsify, including things like cocoa butter, which is very hard to emulsify, but it works with this method. But I'll list all that on Patreon. And if you have questions about emulsions, you know, that Patreon's the place where I'll answer them because it is kind of complex. Like I said, you can get a PhD in this. If you do have questions, ask over there. I'll be happy to answer. So two grams of lemon oil. Now all of these numbers are slightly approximate because what you're gonna do when you actually start seeing this emulsion form, we're going to adjust the water and the propylene glycol until we get a clear solution. And that's how you know you formed the one micron particle or droplet size. So it's not about being super accurate. These are just kind of really close numbers to what we're gonna get. And then we're going to adjust it. So I'm gonna add the water at this point. And that will, with the emulsifier, you can see it start to come together nicely. And you want it thoroughly dissolved. You want a uniform mixture of polysorbate 80 and water. You don't want any you know, gunk floating around because sometimes it will gum up a little bit when you first start. But you want a fully uniform mixture. So do take a little bit of time on this step because this is an important one where you're getting the emulsifier and the water mixed. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to add our essential oil once that's thoroughly mixed. So the next step is to weigh out 48 grams of propylene glycol. And you don't have to be super accurate with this because we're gonna be doing drop by drop adjustments at the end, but you just want to be reasonably accurate. So 50.56 is close enough. There'll be a little left over in the beaker when we're done. But one of the things I will mention is that the patent actually uses polysorbate 60 and it's a slightly different emulsifier. This is kind of like, almost like a petroleum jelly texture. And it's a little different, just the way emulsifiers work. So with polysorbate 80, we need to make some little adjustments. And the adjustments are really easy. It's a few drops of water or a few drops of propylene glycol until this turns clear. So I'll show you that uh, because what's gonna happen is as soon as I add this, this is gonna become really cloudy. Now I just spin this around to make sure that there's no pockets of emulsifier or oil. And then we're gonna turn this up a bit and we're just gonna let it stir for a good couple minutes just until everything's fully uniform because uh, a few extra minutes here is gonna make a big difference when you end up with your nice clear emulsions. You will see some of the oil floating on top. So you can just spin the beaker and it will just, uh, the magnetic stir will, uh, pull it into the polysorbate and eventually it just becomes a very pale yellow color. So just let this stir for a bit and then we'll start adding some of our propylene glycol. 
but I like to warm up the propylene glycol, so I'll just put this on here for a couple minutes. Again, we're not really hot, we're kind of in the 50 degree range. So this will only take a couple minutes to warm up. And once this is warmed up, we're gonna start adding that to this mixture. So at this point, my propylene glycol is warm and we're just gonna start adding this to the mixture. And as you can see, it is quite hazy, but uniform. And much like baking a mayonnaise, you don't wanna break the emulsion. So you wanna add this fairly, it doesn't have to be super slow, but just don't dump the whole mixture in. And as soon as you start adding, the propylene glycol, you're gonna to start to see that it uh, becomes brighter. And it will start clearing up. So by the time we get near the bottom of this, it will uh, probably be pretty clear. We may need to do some adjustments or we may not need all of the propylene glycol. Again, this is the visual part. You don't need any scientific equipment. You just need to be able to look at this and notice when it's clear. Now you'll see at this point, it is actually pretty clear. So we'll just keep adding. And then what you're gonna find is that it may actually go cloudy again by the time you get all this propylene glycol in, but that's an easy fix by just adding a few drops of water. We're getting quite close to the point where there is a, we're at the proper micron size. And again, now it's even clearer and you can just see it happening. Now you'll see that it went cloudy and you'll think, oh, I broke the emulsion, but there is a solution and it's an easy one. What you're just gonna do is add a little water. And just do it drop by drop. And you'll see that it magically starts to go clear again. And now at this point, I'd say it's probably clear enough. It just needs to be clear enough that you could read some letters through it. It doesn't have to be perfectly clear because when you're spinning it with the magnetic stir, it's pulling in air. So you're getting a little air droplet or air bubbles in there, which does make it a little bit hazy. But the more you do this, the more you'll realize that it becomes clean. Now, if you accidentally add too much water, and then it goes cloudy again. You're just gonna take your propylene glycol, so a few drops of propylene glycol, and you're just gonna add that into it and you're gonna just balance it. And this is what's the way you work with this emulsification method. So if you're substituting a different emulsifier, sometimes you need to play with it a little bit. And then when you come up with your final formulation, you'll You'll, I'll teach you methods how to be accurate in your weight so that you re can reproduce it. But typically, this is pretty easy to do. And again, this is gonna make 50 liters of flavored beverage, finished product with carbonated water or whatever you're doing. But I'm just gonna turn this off at this point and turn off the magnetic stir and let the air bubbles come out. And then we're just gonna use this little piece of cutout patent paper and see if we can read through this once all the bubbles clear. Now when I hold this piece of paper up, you can see the text is quite small, but if we put it right up, you can make out those numbers. That's clear enough. That is your micro emulsion. Again, there's gonna be some lensing effects because the beaker is round, but if you can make out any number in there, uh, we're good. And I can read it from here. So uh, that means you formed your micro emulsion. So that is basically what these are. And it does look a little different just because it's warm. As it cools down, it's gonna look like this. And these are stable and they will stay this way for, according to the patent, months and years, up to a year, uh, stored at room temperature. Something you can use and store for a long period of time. But let me show you just how simple it is to make a drink. And I'm just gonna use my, this is a basic taster. I've done a video on it. It's just a 10% solution of sugar and water. So 100 grams in a liter. And then I just add a little acid to kind of help with the flavor a little bit. Though the acid's kind of low in this for a lemon flavored beverage, but it will work. So we're just going to pour out 100 grams or 100 mils of this will work. 
we do, we do need to stir this when we're adding the emulsion because that's just one of those things. So we'll use, we'll actually use a cool down emulsion. I don't want to use uh, any heat to try to get that a little quieter, but you want some vortexing. And then we're just going to add four drops of this. And let it stir for a few minutes. Eventually, we'll, I'll show you how to add it to simple syrup. But each step, I just want you to understand in this video how easy it is to make this emulsion. And then we'll go from there to create syrups and eventually our Crystal Pepsi. So this is a multi-parter. I'll talk more about uh, emulsifiers. So polysorbates and sucrose esters. And if you're thinking lethicin, no, that's got an HLB value of like four. It's barely soluble in water. And so it'd just be like adding more essential oil. You're just gonna get some floating going on. Now, gum arabic is around eight to 10. If you get highly purified gum arabic, you can get it up to 12. May work, but you're probably still gonna need mechanical. You're not gonna get the spontaneous formation of this one micron droplet size using gum arabic. You do need a more powerful emulsifier. And so this is basically stirred long enough. Uh, if you look on it, there's no separation. There's nothing floating on the top. It's perfectly clear and smells like lemon. And it has a mild, pleasant lemon flavor. Now, the one thing about lemon oil is you can use a fair amount of it in beverages up to 230 parts per million. I think at this level, we're kind of at like the 50 parts per million. So you could, quadruple the amount you put in, but we're gonna work on all of that. I just wanted to show you the emulsification power for a perfectly clear beverage. And that is perfectly clear. And according to the patent, these are stable for six months. This is again, a, a commercial level product. And I'm gonna talk about the patent and the two people that invented this who worked for Pepsi, a Peter Wolf and a Margaret Havcott. And they do deserve credit. Anytime I do these things, I wanna make sure I give credit to the people who invented this. I didn't invent this, I'm just using their method. And I will talk about that more when we get into making our Crystal Cola uh, in a future video. But that's basically how you make a perfectly clear emulsion with four ingredients, two pieces of equipment in real time. So I've done all of this other than cutting out the stir time in real time. It only takes like 20 minutes, maybe 25 minutes. You can do a whole bunch of these if you have a couple stir plates. So you can start experimenting. And again, if you ever do the gin one, and I probably will, tell me how it goes because I'm really curious because I think this is the method that makes non-alcoholic gin drinks viable. So if you have any questions, if they're just a basic question, ask it on Patreon or ask it down below in the comment section. If you have a more complex question, ask it over on Patreon. It's just one of those things. This is a complex topic, so I do need to support this channel and my time. So Patreon is preferred for complex questions. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.